This is CBS. I'm Kim Cook. Coming up on Newsline 9, it may cut down on traffic, but some residents are not happy with it. I'll have that story. Is the city of Edmond playing Let's Make a Deal with Lake Arcadia? And people who are fighting cancer and surviving. Those stories and more next on Newsline 9. Join us. KWTV 9, the spirit of Oklahoma. Now, the number one rated newscast in Oklahoma with Mike Carpenter, Sheila Hyland, sports with Rich Henkels, and Alan Mitchell with the weather. This is Newsline 9 Weekend Edition. Good evening. The price of progress may be too high for some residents of Oklahoma City. Traffic improvements will soon be underway in the neighborhoods of Heritage Hills, Heritage Hills East, and Mesta Park. But some of those improvements will mean traffic barriers in one neighborhood. And as Newsline 9's Kim Cook explains from our newsroom, it is a project some residents don't welcome. Kim? Mike, a few residents in Heritage Hills East say they don't want the barriers in their neighborhood, but they say their opinions are being blocked. John McCandless says when the plan to build the diverters first came up in 86, he was never informed. He says even now the association isn't being open to opposition. ...has been very selective in taking only those people that agree with them on the ideas. But those in charge of the project say residents have had every opportunity to come forward. I can't understand how anybody could not be aware of what's going on. We solicited input from from everybody in these three neighborhoods. And we've gone out of our way to encourage input so that we could come up with a plan that works for everybody. The diverters will go up sometime this summer. They will siphon down traffic where Broadway intersects 19th, 20th, and 21st streets. Wiggins says the whole point of the barriers is to cut down on the cars in the area, make it safer, more like a neighborhood. But residents like John McCandless say because the barriers are near their homes, they don't feel they've been treated very neighborly. Sheila. Thank you, Kim. Edmond City Council is debating several options they have in hopes of keeping Lake Arcadia open. The Corps of Engineers has ordered Edmond to sign an agreement to pay for what the Corps has built, or else they will close the lake July 1st. The Corps has billed Edmond for $9 million, but city leaders say they aren't going to pay for a 250% cost overrun. Officials say they don't want to lose the parks either. That's not to say that we won't come up with some sort of an offer to make to the Corps of Engineers that may uh, in some way uh, stave off the proposed action that they're going to take so the public can continue to use those parks. We Spiegel says the city may try to compromise with the Corps. He says city council has even thought about a bond issue for the people to vote on. Whatever it takes, Spiegel says Edmund would like to keep the lake without the extra cost. City council meets tomorrow to discuss its options. The contract between Firestone and the United Rubber Workers Union has been ratified. Union workers in Oklahoma City voted against the contract, but rubber workers in other parts of the country have approved it. Today, Akron, Ohio became the fourth local to approve it, thus assuring ratification. Although Oklahoma City workers voted no, they will have to abide by the national vote. And we'll be back right after this. Stay with us schools in the past five years than any other state in the nation. According to the Department of Education, the state uh, revenue for Oklahoma schools has increased 2% since 1982. That compares to a national average of 41%. Regionally, Texas increased education funding 39% in the past five years. Missouri, 41%, and Arkansas, 54%. What do these statistics mean for education in Oklahoma? Oklahoma Education Association President Kyle Dollum joins us to talk more about that. And Kyle, what do these statistics not only mean for Oklahoma, but what do they say about our state education system? Well, quite frankly, Sheila, they are alarming statistics that seem to project a very negative image about Oklahoma, a perception that education in Oklahoma is not of the caliber that is necessary to meet the needs of students who must be productive citizens in the 21st century. Well, Kyle, we see legislators spending a lot of money on prisons, for instance. Do they have their priorities in the right place? It, with education, what we uh, uh, see actually is not very much in, in the sense that when we make an investment in education, it's a long-term investment. Uh, with prisons, we, we see in a very immediate need. We have something that's got to be done at, at this moment. 
Uh, quite frankly, if the investment is not made in education in a very short time, we're going to reap uh, just tragic uh, uh, problems because the money hasn't been put there at the time when the child is there. All right, Kyle Dahlem, thank you so much for joining us. And we'll be back with weather in a moment. Don't go away. Death playoff is a wasted. So here's Alan. <laughs> All right. And the weather sure isn't wasting, though, is it? It has just been great today. Tomorrow looks good as well. We'll check it right now. Here in the city at 530, temperature 79 degrees. Humidity's dry at 34%. Winds have been light pretty much most of the day. Right now, out of the east at 8 miles an hour. And the pressure's falling from 30.06 inches. We'll check the numbers real fast. Record high for this date, 99. Record low is 48. We were 59 this morning. The highest I've seen so far this afternoon, 81 degrees. Now, around the state of this hour, most everyone right around that 80 degree mark except for out a little bit warmer 85 there and in the eastern part of the state McAllister coming in now with 82 south saw still a little warm there about 84. Here's the satellite photo just taken and we've got a little weak upper level disturbance out here around Amarillo and it'll be moving northeastward so there may be a, just a very slight chance of seeing a shower or a thunderstorm across maybe extreme northwestern Oklahoma maybe perhaps the panhandle but it doesn't look too uh, too significant right now however they are having severe weather up around Denver 20 miles north of Denver in the town of Erie reported a tornado on the ground just a few minutes ago. Here's the five-day for, forecast for tomorrow. 90 degrees in Denver, 91 in Albuquerque. Phoenix still hot, 104 there. Look at Billings, 98 degrees tomorrow. A little bit of rain up in the northwest, but just kind of a little bit. And down in the southeast, though, if you're headed down there, it looks like quite a bit of rain. Uh, New Orleans tomorrow, 87 degrees. Atlanta will be nice, though, about 84. Then up there in the northeast, sunshine, 82 coming in there from New York City. Now, then, here's the five-day forecast for the metro area. About 60 degrees in the morning, another sunny, fine day tomorrow, high right around 84. Tuesday looks good, too. And uh, right now, it looks like just kind of a gradual warm-up. We may even be close to 90 degrees there on Wednesday. And I may be a little optimistic, but no rain for the next five days. Here's the forecast across the state for tonight. Just clear and mild, light southeast winds. Lows will be generally in the 50s and tomorrow. Sunny and warm around Oklahoma. Southeast winds 10 to 15. Highs close to 90 degrees there in the southwest around Altus to 82 uh, up around Miami and Oklahoma City. The metro area just mild tonight and sunshine tomorrow and probably be wonderful as well. And it's <laughs> just everything just great yeah, all week long. Yeah, can't complain about that, can you? Not at all. Thanks, Alan. Rich Hankles is next with sports. Stay with us. There's a party going on. Tell us about it. It's happening right here with Pat Sajak and Vanna White. Now that's a great combination. So join in the celebration and watch the wheels spin for incredible prices and big, big money. Now that's good. That's, that, that's very good. I love it when he talks like that. Get together with your friends for fun and excitement because the hottest party happens right here every day. On Wheel of Fortune. The Wheel of Fortune, Monday through Saturday at 6.30 on TV9. Well, the reason we're on late this evening is, of course, because the golf tournament tournament was on beforehand. Right. And Since 1983, Morris Sotalski had not won a tournament. Not bad. He made $144,000 by beating Tom Kite and the well, Kemper. We'll hold him over for another three years. That's about <laughs> what your paycheck is every week, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, pretty close to good that. Good golf action. We'll show that tonight at 10. But better action today at the French Open. Mats Volander, great tennis. Though it is not one of his goals, so he says, Mats Volander is still in line to win tennis's Grand Slam. Today, the third-seeded Volander won his third French Open title, disappointing the Paris crowd perhaps by beating Frenchman Henri Leconte in straight sets. Volander was in control from the start. Concentration on his face at all times. He really played some great tennis. Look at this passing shot. Wow, that is incredible. His counterpart took all the gambles but failed to convert on any of them, losing 7-5, 6-2, 6-1. Volander hit only two unforced errors in the final two sets, winning in just less than two hours on the famed Roland Garris clay. Just watch uh, more of the beautiful tennis. Volander is a great clay court specialist. With that shot long by Leconte, Verlander has now won both the Australian and French Open titles. Next up, Wimbledon at the end of June. Should he pull it off there, the U.S. Open will be the only thing left for him to win the Grand Slam title. But we'll see what happens and the weeks to come with that. Oklahoma City 89ers lost a heartbreaker, and I do mean heartbreaker, last night. Final score was 4-3. Three, three. They lost in Nashville in 11 innings. Tonight, they hope to even the score. Game time is 7:35. That one also in Nashville. Last night, the Texas Rangers fell to a six-run ninth inning by the White Sox. Today, it was started off badly. Greg Walker makes it 3-0 for the Sox. 
Then it was 4 0. And then Petey and Cavillia helps Texas get close. That is a mammoth home run to left field. Upper deck material, 4 3 Texas Trails. They go into the ninth and they actually get close, but they lost this game, well, in the sun. Ruben Sierra with a big time error there. Final count. Five to four, Texas falls to Chicago. New York scores nine runs in the top of the first inning to down Baltimore 9-2. The Oars, Orioles still having their troubles. Toronto 12-4 over Boston, no problem there. Swindell loses to Detroit 6-2, Cleveland falls. Minnesota 4-3 over Oakland. That's going to be a battle down to the wire, I think, in that league. Seattle 3-2. Seven, they fall to Kansas City. Can't read my own scoreboard here. And in the 10th inning, it's 5-5 five five California and Milwaukee. Mets and the Cubs, they snuck into the fourth inning at Shea Stadium. Scoreless. Then in the fifth, the Mets broke it loose. Gary Carter makes it 4 to nothing at that point with a single. All singles here, folks. No big home runs, but they really hit the ball to the tune of 11 runs. Dwight Gooden stake to an 11 to nothing lead. And what does he do? He just settles them down and mows them down. Gooden marking the first anniversary of his return from drug rehabilitation with a big victory there for the Mets. They lead and win 11-2-3. Philadelphia, no problem with St. Louis. They win 6-3. Montreal, 3-2 winners over Pittsburgh. In the sixth inning, L.A. leads Cincinnati by a mere two runs. Ninth inning score, San Francisco by six over Houston. Will Clark, a two-run home run there. And Atlanta wins by two over San Diego, 3-1. We will have some NASCAR, some horse racing. You name it, we got it tonight at 10. Come right. on back. <laughs> we'll be back in a moment. They used to say cancer was incurable. Being diagnosed with it was like getting a death sentence. But now doctors say they are curing half of all cancer patients. Some types of cancer have a survival rate as high as 95%. Today, here and around the country, former cancer patients are celebrating National Cancer Survivors Day. Tonight at 10, we'll tell you more about it and introduce you to a lady who fought off one of the deadliest forms of cancer. An innovative acting troupe that breathed new life into an old warehouse is bidding its first home a last farewell. Carpenter Square Theater began its first season three years ago in a downtown warehouse. The theater has been fairly successful, but the building is being torn down to make way for the new city county jail. The group's hoping it doesn't have to look far for its new home. Downtown has been very important to us. We started here in a downtown warehouse. We are keeping up the Mummers tradition. Mummers was a downtown institution. And one of the things we're proud of, we think we're keeping up that tradition. We would like to stay downtown if possible. The theater prides itself on performing less traditional plays instead of the old classics. And, and there it goes. Lights yeah. out. <laughs> and it's lights out for us, but we will see you tonight at 10 o'clock. Styles for the Channel 9 News Team, furnished by Logsdon Hair Designers. Newsline 9 is the number one rated newscast in Oklahoma. 